Hello everyone, my name is Brian Mercier. Many people know me as Catholic Brian, and I'm happy to be here to present this video on the power of one life and how one life, one single life, can make a difference and change the world or change the world around you. Many years ago, my life was changed by God. You might not know it by looking at me, but I used to dress in all black from head to toe. I used to carry weapons. I used to be angry. I used to be depressed. I used to hate the world. I mean, sure, I was a good kid, but I had a lot of pain. I had a lot of abuse. I was bullied a lot. And many things in my life caused me to sadness and depression and Really, I just had a hard time even having faith. I mean, I believed in God. I went to church every Sunday. I prayed every single day, but I had a hard time believing that God loved me. Where was God in my life? He wasn't answering my prayers, and everything I prayed for didn't seem to come true. And so I struggled for many years, seven years. In fact, I didn't even look in the mirror for seven years because I hated what I saw. And I thought I was the ugliest person on planet Earth. I thought I'd never find a family. I thought I'd never get married. I thought I'd never have kids. And of course, all of that is false. And I am married today, happily married. And I do have a wonderful, beautiful little child named Sophia. And the bottom line is that I struggled for many years until God came into my life. And when God came into my life, it was powerful. I mean, imagine an 18-wheeler truck going about 55 miles an hour and slamming into you. When I got hit for the first time by the power of God, it felt like a truck hitting me. And it went through my whole body, and I had this powerful St. Paul conversion where God knocked me off my horse. And he filled me with so much peace, so much light, so much joy, so much of the Holy Spirit to overflowing that I couldn't even contain it. And Jesus told me that he could change my life if I let him. And over the course of the next year, God would come into my life and it would be a powerful experience. And since those days, I've gone into ministry and now I do ministry full time because I just told God that I wanted to heal people the way he healed me. I wanted to transform people's lives the way he transformed mine. And I wanted to bring light and peace and joy and love into this fallen dark world just as he did in mine. And he's allowed me to do that over the last 20 years. I've spoken to and helped and counseled so many people people. I've helped people. I mean, I've literally talked people off bridges. I mean, not literal bridge, but I've convinced people not to commit suicide. And I've talked them out of their death wish or have counseled razors out of their hands. I've counseled people who were considering abortions and they came to talk to me. And I've talked to so many people who are considering abortions. I've talked to so many people who are angry and depressed like me. People who had no self-esteem like me. People who struggled in life for years and feel like they're at rock bottom. I have been blessed to be able to help so many people. I mean, total life transformations in some of these people's lives. And my question is, where would these people be if I wasn't born? Where would these people be if my mother aborted me. And here's the thing. The purpose of this talk is that people in my mother's life told her to abort me. People told my mother to abort me because my parents, my dad had lost his job. My parents couldn't afford me. I was going to have a hard life. I was going to suffer. You know all the arguments. So people told her to abort me. And now, I I love life. I love being alive. I love what Christ did in my life. And yes, I had some hard years. I did have some difficult years. But you know what? We can't say you should abort someone just because you're going to have a tough life or they're going to suffer or they're going to grow up with pain. Many people do. But God takes that pain and he transforms it. As one priest said, God takes our dung and he turns it into fertilizer, which produces whole flower gardens of beauty. And that's what God has done in my life. And imagine Imagine if I wasn't here. It's like that movie, It's a Wonderful Life, where he didn't realize the power and the purpose of what one life can do in this world. And it's the same thing in my life. I didn't realize if I wasn't around, who would have counseled all of those people? Who would have transformed their lives? Who would have talked them off the cliff or talked the razor out of their arms or talked them out of having an abortion or all of the other hundreds and hundreds of circumstances and people that I have been blessed to help? And it's all because I was born. One life can make such a difference. One life 
can make such an impact. And I've reached millions of lives for Christ. One life. Now, if, imagine if we all had that. And imagine the generation that's been wiped out. I mean, thousands and thousands, maybe millions of lives have been wiped out. And each one of those could have changed the world in some way. Would we be in the mess we're in if we had those lives to make this world a better place? There's a story of a girl named Clara. And Clara was actually a young girl in Massachusetts. And she was really shy and anxious to the point where even when she was around people, she would throw up because she was too shy to be around them. And it would create too much anxiety. So Clara struggled in her early life. And she stayed home. She never went out. She hardly talked to anyone until one day her brother fell off a roof. And he had a be rushed to the hospital. Now, he was one of the most important people in her life. And every day she took deep breaths and tried to force herself to have the courage to go visit her brother. And day by day, she eventually worked up that courage. And she went to visit her brother and she eventually worked up the courage to ask the nurse if she could help and stay by her brother's bedside. And she was allowed to. And she did little tasks like taking scissors, picking up meds, bringing this, bringing that. And the doctors actually realized that she had a talent for this. And she really cared for people deep inside underneath the anxiety facade. And so they started giving her deeper and bigger and more tasks. And eventually she started helping to run the clinic. And when a pandemic broke out in her town of Massachusetts, she was the one who went around the towns and cared for people in the outbreak. I believe it was smallpox. And she helped countless people. And this little girl, Clara Barton, went on to start the Red Cross and has helped millions upon millions of people in this world because one life truly can make a difference. And if we think of where our lives and where this world would be without people like Mother Teresa, who changed thousands of lives. Mother Teresa had such a profound impact. This is the power of a saint. One saint can change the world. And, and people like Mother Teresa and St. Therese of Lisieux, Padre Pio, Pope John Paul II, they've been dead for decades and they're still changing the world because that's the power of holy living. It's the power of what God can do in our lives. How many lives did Mother Teresa and Pope John Paul II combined? I mean, how many lives did they reach? And Padre Pio and St. Anthony of Padua, St. Francis of Assisi, how many lives would have never been reached, would have never been saved, maybe would have been in hell if these people wouldn't have been born? How many people would have died in the streets without care and compassion if Mother Teresa had never been born? One life can make such a difference. Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict used to have a uh, and Pope Francis still does, they have dinners for poor people at the Vatican where they invite hundreds of poor people from the streets and they give them meals, they give them showers, they shave their beards, they treat them with dignity and compassion. And where would they be if the popes did not start this? So many people have been helped because of the life of Pope John Paul II and then Benedict and Francis and so on. But the bottom line is that one life can make a difference. One life can transform the world. And I know people who have had botched abortions who should be dead, but they are alive. And they went on to change the world in some way. They went on to make a difference in the world. And then you think of people like Pam Stenzel or Rebecca Kiesling, who's actually giving a talk in this uh, pro-life conference. And she has a powerful testimony about how she was a product of rape. And so many people who were products of rape, people tell them, hey, get rid of them. You know, you have to make exceptions for rape and incest. You know, these people shouldn't have to carry a baby. And these, ba basically they're saying the babies have no life. Life. And Rebecca Kiesling is now owning an organization. She changes thousands of lives. She helps people, mothers, children. Pam Stenzel, she's the one who said, who are you to tell me that just because my mother was conceived in rape and my dad's a rapist, that my life has no value? She's like, my life has just as much value as anyone else else in the world because we're all equal in God's eyes and nobody has the right to tell me that I have to die. Wow, that's powerful. And Pam Stenzel today is a counselor 
for teens and she helps them and counsels them not to have sex or to have sex in the right way at the right time and with the right person in marriage <laughs> for the sake of love and for the sake of children. And she has helped so many teens through these difficult times and even teens who have messed up and have had sexual relations or had kids. She's there to counsel them and she's there to steer them down the right track. She's helped thousands, tens of hundreds of thousands of people. And imagine if her life was never there. All of those lives would never have made a difference. And in fact, it's like uh, It's a Wonderful Life, that movie. If that one man had not been born, all of those different people would have different lives. They were all impacted by him, and they all had terrible lives if he wasn't born. So one life can make a difference. And we have aborted a whole generation of lives. We've aborted a whole generation of children. We've said they're not important. They are, do not deserve to live. That these rights are more important than these rights. And we preach the right to life, liberty, in the pursuit of happiness. But we don't always believe that. And it's not for all people. It's only for certain people, according to the pro-abortion industry and the pro-murder arguments. And one life, even their life, makes a difference. And even the people who are against us, the pro-abortion people, think about that. We need to pray for them because even their lives can make a difference for good or for bad. And Abby Johnson, everybody knows how her life converted to the Catholic faith after being a Planned Parenthood director. And she has changed millions of lives. I mean, she's a world celebrity now for good. Because her life, that one life, is now making a difference for good. So don't doubt the power of one life. Don't doubt the power of this as an apologetics argument that people, that one life, can change the world. Taking away that life and trying to pl play God can ruin the world, can ruin families, can ruin relationships, and can ruin... I mean, Mother Teresa herself said she would never raise a kid in America because there is such a greater poverty here than anywhere else in the world. She said the greatest poverty that's here is a poverty of love, where parents think that just for convenience sake, they can kill their own children. She's like, that is the greatest poverty. So look at my life. Look at the life of Mother Teresa, Pope John Paul II. Look at the life of Rebecca Kiesling, Pam Stenzel, Padre Pio. Every life has the ability to make a difference. It does not matter if you suffer. It does not matter if you have a hard life. So many people have had hard lives, and yet they've gone out to help other people who have had hard lives. They've gone on to change other people's. I see I had a hard life, and I struggled with many things, which is why I'm able to help so many other people who struggle in their lives, because I've gotten from point A to point B in my life, and I can help others to get from point A to point B in their life. So don't underestimate the power of what God does. Let's not play God, and let's not pretend that we can think that certain lives are important and other ones aren't. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for participating in this pro-life uh, conference. It's all going to go to waste if you don't take this information and share it with the world. Be inspired by it. Be changed by it. And bring it to others, whether they listen or not. Be a light, a source of joy. And here's my closing story, because this is how one life can make a difference or not make a difference. Before God really changed my life and really, you know, put his love deep in me and changed my heart, I remember I was in front of an abortion mill and this lady came up to me and she got nose to nose with me and she started yelling in my face. And she said, how dare you be here? You're a man. You do not understand what abortion is about. You don't have ovaries. You're not a woman. You have no rights. And back then I used to get heated about arguments before God changed my heart. And I used to, I used to get angry and I used to argue with Protestants and tell them how stupid they were because the Catholic Church was true and they're idiots if they just don't understand that. And I couldn't grasp why these people had no brains in their head. And of course, I don't believe that now. It's just my attitude at the time. And I remember when this girl was yelling at me, it was right after I had just argued with a Protestant. I was already angry. I was already heated. So I pointed back in her face. I said, how dare you lecture me, you baby murderer? I was like, you're killing babies and you're lecturing me? Where do you think people are going to go when they die who killed God's babies? I was like, that place is prepared for you. And I felt so self-righteous and I was high and mighty and I walked away and I told her the truth. And that woman was going to learn a lesson. Oh, yes. And so I came back about five minutes later. Whew, 
after I calmed down, after I was not as heated anymore and I cooled down and I came back to that same curb and what I saw actually changed my, the course of my life. It changed the way that I would view everything forever. It was a lightning revelation from God. And what I saw was my friend Bridget. And Bridget was sitting Indian style on the cement. And this lady who I had talked to was laying on the cement, laying straight down on the cement. And her head was in Bridget's lap. And she was bawling her eyes out, sobbing. I mean, she was like coughing up her lungs. She was crying so hard. Now, Bridget couldn't explain her faith to save her soul. She can't explain her faith out of a paper bag. And I was like, what happened? What, what did Bridget do to get through to this woman? How did she make this woman break down and cry? And how did she get through? To, what did I do wrong? I mean, this is how stubborn and hard-headed I was. And the reality is that Bridget loved this woman. She didn't judge her. She didn't yell at her. She didn't just give self-righteous arguments and condemn her like I did. The reality is I probably destroyed this woman with my words, which were like a sledgehammer. And I may have pushed her away from God forever. The only thing that may have saved that is the fact that Bridget actually acted like Jesus. Bridget actually did what she was supposed to, and she loved this woman, and she was kind to this woman, and she was stroking this woman's hair so gently, so lovingly, with such non-judgmentalism, and I just sat there, and God struck me with lightning, a spiritual lightning force at that moment, and I saw, and I realized for the first time in my life that it's all about love, and her life, Bridget's life, made a difference in that woman's life, and I didn't. I ruined that woman's life. Maybe forever. Thankfully, Bridget hopefully corrected it. But the bottom line is, I've never yelled at anyone. I've never got heated when I discuss with them. I've never condemned them. I've, I'm, God has filled my heart with so much love and peace and understanding and compassion for people of all walks of life when I discuss with them because he's given me a singular grace for this ever since. And I can tell you that I've brought so many more people into the Catholic Church based on my example of love rather than the words I say. So in all of this, especially in the pro-life war zone that we're in, we have to love and be kind and compassionate and not act like them, not become like them. And since then, that is when my life changed. And God has used this one life to make a difference in so many other lives because one life truly can make a difference. God bless you.